On the morning of uh, September the 11th, 2001, I called the ground and uh, my flight surgeon, uh, Steve Hart, came on and uh, I said, hey Steve, how's it going? He said, well Frank, we're not having a very good day down here on Earth. Um, and he began to describe to me what was happening in New York, the airplanes that were flown into the World Trade Center, the airplane that was flown into the Pentagon. And as we were talking, they said, uh, we just lost another airplane somewhere in Pennsylvania. We don't know where or what's happening. Uh, and they told us all they could, which wasn't very much. As we were talking, I looked at the uh, laptop that has our world map on it, and I saw that we were coming across southern Canada, and in a minute we were going to be over New England. Uh, and so I raced around, and I said, I'll be back to you in a minute, to the ground. And I raced around, found a video camera and a window facing in the right direction, which was in the Russian segment, and uh, got in the window, and looking out the window uh, from over Maine, about 400 miles away from New York City, uh, I could clearly see the city. It was a perfect weather day all over the United States and uh, the only activity I could see was this big black column of smoke coming out of New York City out over Long Island and over the Atlantic and as I zoomed in with the video camera I saw this big gray blob basically enveloping uh, the southern part of Manhattan and what I was seeing was a second tower come down. I didn't know exactly what I was seeing, I just assumed it was more explosions. I assumed tens of thousands of people were, were uh, being hurt or killed and uh, it was just horrible to see my company, country under attack and uh, so I made some comments about what I was seeing, uh, expressed my condolences to the victims and, and expressed the hope that they would soon bring the people to justice who were responsible for this. Uh, it was very difficult to, to watch that and to, to realize what was happening to my country. One of the most startling uh, uh, effects was that Within about two orbits, all the contrails that are normally crisscrossing the United States had disappeared because they had grounded all the airplanes and there was nobody else flying in the U.S. airspace except for one airplane that was leaving a contrail from the, from the uh, central U.S. towards Washington and that was Air Force One headed back to D.C. with President Bush. The next morning, uh, Steve came on the, the uh, classified loop uh, or encrypted loop and said, hey, T.J. Kramer wants to talk to you. Now, T.J. was my backup astronaut who took care of things on the ground for me while I was in space. And he came on and he said, hey, Frank, I've, uh, I've got some bad news. Now, I assumed with all the pilots I know, the people in the military, people who work in New York, that I'd know someone who was affected by this in some way. And T.J. Uh, described to me what had happened with the flight into the Pentagon. And it turned out that the command captain of that flight was a classmate of mine from the U.S. Naval Academy named Chick Burlingame. He and I had both been aero majors, we both flew F-4s, we knew each other very well from school and from flying. And he, uh, of course, lost his life in that, in that part of the attack and it became very personal to me at that point. And uh, coincidentally, we were getting ready to have our 30th class reunion in about 10 days and so it became a memorial to Chick and to his service to the country. He was still a reserve pilot uh, flying F-4s and flew for American Airlines at the time.